I'm just having a quick check here. No feet. This big girl here who's missing one of her tags. Uh, 554. She's the oldest girl in the herd and she is in calf to a Belgian blue. She's laying there chewing her cud, but she is in labour and she should be calved the next hour or two. Big cow. I put a Belgian blue in her. I don't really want to breed from her. Um, not for a Frisian anyway. So um, that'll be her last calf she'll have on this farm. Last night I put in silage um, with the cows and I noticed a distinctive smell of diesel um, coming through the vents in the tractor. I wasn't sure where it was coming from, but I knew it was quite strong, so I had to stop and have a look, and it didn't take me long to look and find out where the culprit was coming from. Well, I haven't found out exactly where it's coming from yet, but in here, you can see the side of the engine is soaked in diesel. So we have a really bad diesel leak in here somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the tractor around so that it's facing to the sun so you guys can see what I'm doing because here it's in the shade and the GoPros are useless in the shade. So I'm gonna do that first, but when I turn it around, you're also going to see how much diesel is actually leaking out of it. Oh yeah, I'm going to grab this here real quick. Where is it coming from? That's the next thing, but you can see the flow of that. So it instantly stops when the tractor's turned off. So that leads me to believe it's coming from up around the injector somewhere. So we're gonna have to strip the whole thing down. That's the only way we can see to find out where exactly it is coming from. So I'm gonna take off the seg covers here first. And um, we're gonna take off that air breeder on the top. And we're probably gonna have to just lift off the whole hood as well. So let's get that done first and then we'll get a proper look at it. Much easier with the loader off, but I can't even start the tractor to run it for no length of time, and my diesel tank will be completely empty. Right, well, that's our side panels off. I don't think we're going to be able to still see where our leak is coming from. We're going to start it anyway and have a wee look. front off altogether. Very good. I should clear, I should just get off now. That's our three main nuts in the front off. I have two there and two there. Then we're going to remove our breeder uh, vent on the top and this bonnet will lift off. Right, there's a little jibby clip here we have to loosen off. Finally have a wee look in here and see what we're dealing with. Um, which is, I don't see in there yet. Probably gonna have to remove all this. It's all covered. There's something leaking underneath. You can see there this tractor, it's very compact because of the four cylinder. Everything's on top of itself and there's not much room to work on things like this. So you have to strip down. You spend your whole time stripping stuff down to try and get at the thing you want to see could spend half the evening digging down here to see what I have to take off and what I don't have to take off but I have a feeling there's a bit of stripping to be done yet although I'm trying to move these I don't want to I don't want to take off too much just whatever I need to get the thing moved so I'm gonna to have to remove a few of these for starters now I have to get a picture and make sure on my phone that I put these things back together right are on right. You 
camera is your best friend in situations like this. I'm gonna loosen off this overflow and we're gonna loosen off that guy there, which is just feeding the air into the turbo. We're gonna keep on walking around here to make sure we've everything disconnected and lift this air cleaner and water bottle off to one side. I don't want to disconnect it completely because this is full antifreeze. I'm trying not to take off <laughs> too much because the more you take off, the more you have to remember to put back on. Oh, my socket, my socket. Where'd it go? Did it fall on the ground? Did you see it? No. There we go. Took that out of the way. No. Um, yeah. You're definitely gonna have to come off. Can we move? Just enough appearance. Right, so here we are. Here's our problem in here, probably. So these are all eight. I'm gonna take this side off first before we touch this one, and maybe we can solve it from here. Release, we are. Oh, we're seeing pipes here now. I don't know. Oh, there's our problem. There's a problem right there. That pipe has come off. That's it, and it's split as well, which is even better. This pipe here, going from injector to injector, there's these little rubber pipes, and they just push on, they're just a push fit. And that rubber pipe there, as you can see, has a split in it, can you see that? I'm gonna have to go up to Massey and get one of those. I'll make a phone call for us to see can I get it. And if I can, I'm just gonna put a new one on it. I don't wanna be stripping this all back down again. That split is a right bit up that pipe bit of a silly design. So this is our pipe here, and that's the reason we've had our diesel leak. That guy there is cracked. These are a braided pipe, but you can see the way that's cracked, and that's what that just pushes down. Uh, they're just a push fit. They're not really under any pressure. They're called a uh, leak off pipe, coming from the injectors, but that's her problem anyway. That has come loose, or just perished and cracked open and just popped off. So there's three of them in total, come as three as a kit. And there we are, that's our genuine Massey or Agro, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to replace all three of them. Now that one went, there's a good chance the others will probably follow suit. Seems to be a common fault with them. Bad design, probably. But look at, we have the three of them, we'll stick them on and hopefully we'll have no more problems for a while anyway. There's the whole in. You see how loose that is? That's on, off, on, off. It's cracked open as well. Yeah, poor design. Right. Yeah, look good there. Right, so we're on. I'm just going to check it now. I'm going to turn on the key in the tractor and that'll pump the diesel up. And if there is a leak, it'll show up fairly quickly. Yeah, our problem is fixed. No, no leaks there. Right, so the next thing we need to plug in is this guy here. I think he's in there. And then we have one over here as well. Remember taking it off? Uh, where is it? My photos. Okay, so white is in the front. There we go. Don't feed him in the way. Make sure he's home. So these V-pipes here, they hook on here. They're split. 
So there's loads of extra pipe available. I have no idea where that went, but that can go on. That'll leave that right there now. That's when he runs down the side of the engine. Job done. I made a little bit of a mistake of letting our dogs out on the cow calving and Bailey has been in barking at the cow and hot trying to calve, which isn't ideal. You'll see her coming up now with the big guilty head because she's after been spotted by me doing it. What are you doing? What are you up to? That guilty walk. So I'm just going to cut a wee bit of this one as well. It's still long enough, it should be alright. Now, one other little thing that I want to fix before we put all the covers back onto the engine is our horn doesn't work. Yeah, our horn hasn't worked in a long time. And would you believe it, as simple of a thing it is, you'd miss it when it wasn't working because there's several times there, even the girls in the yard, I want to just give the horn a toot, just open a gate or whatever. You meet one of the lads on the road and the hand's not good enough, you give a couple of little doots to the horn, there's a bit of a Morris code that goes on around here, uh, certain different lads. But you'd miss it when it's not working. So I got a new one when I was up at the garage picking up the parts for this and we're gonna just stick it on. New Massey one here. Well, say Massey, but it's, yeah, we know what I mean. There we go. I better check sees it working. So that's it, we're all back together. Everything's back the way it should be. And we have no leaks underneath our tractor, so well, that's the most important thing. Gonna tore it off here now. So it's a job fixed. I'll just turn it off there now so you can hear me. It's a job fixed. It took up most of the day. <laughs> it really is three o'clock now in the evening. Our cow down there hasn't calved yet, which I'm a wee bit worried about, so I'm gonna have to look at her now in a wee while. But this job's fixed, I have to play catch up now for the rest of the evening. Another thing which I'm a bit annoyed is I've lost a socket. It fell down into the tractor when I was working on it. And I've been searching, thinking when I moved the tractor back, it would show itself, but it didn't. It's a notoriously hard tractor to really get in and look at anything in because it's so tightly formed together, them four cylinder tractors there. Everything's in its place. <laughs> Space is something, even with the wheels, you just, you can't, really get in and really get at it and the loader itself as well is another bit of a pain but anyway it's job fixed we're going to continue on i'm going to have a wee look here see if i can find my socket i'm not very hopeful about it um i don't like losing my sockets but if i can't get it we're just going to plow on i haven't got much time to play about with it i have to get on to other jobs but anyway it's job fixed let's get on to the next one before i do go i'm just looking here for the socket and the minute i looked boom Right, better just replace what we lost. I mentioned before on the channel back a while ago about calves that can be born in the sack without the sack breaking and they can smother very very easily from it if the cow doesn't get up and lick it off well there's just a prime example do you see the way the sack calf was out the sack was over the calf's head but luckily enough i was watching it here from beside me when i was putting in silage but that's a good result there anyway that's a lovely belgian blue heifer that's the second belgian blue heifer we've had in two days both marked exactly the same so it's the same ai straw we used just something i've seen before our calves have smothered simply from the cow not getting up and the sack not breaking feel terrible after when it happens because all you have to do is just put your finger through it and that's it the calves 100 percent but these things happen you can't be there all the time you will have problems like that right so run away on over to the other farm here and i've got the forks on in the front as you can see here in front of me we are about to start piping slurry we're waiting for the ground to dry up a little more because it did Actually rain, not major rain, but enough just to wet the ground again. So this is the 23rd of February and all next week is supposed to be dry. So we're going to wait it out for a couple of days. But what I am going to do is going to pick up 
um, a couple of traps are sitting at them in the fields and just leave it at the fields already. So when he does come, I don't have to run around like a headless chicken trying to get stuff organised. We have been drawing slurry over here for the past few days. We have the tank over here now full at the top. So it's ready to go. So that's the mat now. I'm just going to move these traps out of the way and just give ourselves that we're ready to rock when he does come. we have it I'll move down here because I have the radio on I do leave the radio on in the shed it helps to keep the boards away the cattle like the radio on too it keeps them quiet and um, but more so to keep the boards away last year worked an absolute treat as long as it wasn't really on a music channel it was on a news talk channel or something like that when there's someone talking rather than music that seemed to have worked better with the boards keeping them away but this year no effect at all the crows were back as bad as ever. Every time I come up, there'd be at least 50 crows crawling all around the silage and everything. Hate to see the magpies actually were worse than anything. Um, so it didn't work the year, but I just left it on anyway, just so the cattle to enjoy it. Pat Kenny, I don't know whether anybody could enjoy that, but look at they seem to enjoy it anyway. You might have noticed when I was taking out the trots, the way the ground was getting a kind of tramped. Now, not too bad around here. But I'm going in there with the small tractor, no tank on the back, and you can see the way the ground is just... You wouldn't be tanking on it, put it that way, you wouldn't be bringing a slurry tanker in on it. It's just the rain that has fallen, not an awful lot, but enough just to wet the whole ground again, just the surface of the ground, so it will need time to dry. It's definitely going to need time to dry before we go in on it. I'm not in any panic. We're not stuck for space. This tank here was a blessing. As I said many times before, an absolute blessing to have to be able to unload some of the stuff from home over here. There's about a foot left on this tank yet, that's why I didn't fill it. In case we get delayed and we wouldn't get our piping out, at least it leaves space for these cattle here. Not for the amount that they'd produce for the few cattle that's in it, but still it left that bit of space. But anyway, that's that job fixed. Hopefully they'll not go again. It's just a bad design. That's what them leak off pipes are. And I've heard a lot of mechanics saying the same. But anyway, it wasn't expensive. Just took a little bit of time to sort out. Not a major issue. You'll have them sorts of things with machinery. I'm going to leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching. We've got plenty coming up now with our slurry gone out. We're on our workshop at the minute, putting a video together on that. But I also have a video done on the T20, but three quarters of the way finished on that video. I also have a video on the Honda Big Red 300. But I'm not going to finish those videos until I get my workshop kind of done that I can finish them properly inside there instead and get that done and ticked off the list. But we've so much happening now at the minute with other jobs. We're just going to film them first and then when it quietens down, we'll upload the videos on the T20 and the Big 300. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Until the next one, talk to you again.